Cheers. Cheers. Man. Thanks for the mug again. This oh, thing's gotten yeah. a lot of action I'm since I've home. Oh, I love that. I love that. Ah, cheers, everybody, to a wonderful, untranslatable time. Coming at you from there Azul Moose Studios here in the dirty little D, aka Dexter, Michigan. I don't know if that's what they call it, but that's what we'll call it from now on. And uh, yeah, so let's get started, Jared. <clears throat> Episode 120, here we go. Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 120, and today it is the very end of summer vacation, so we thought it would be time to talk about summer vacation. So we're looking forward to bringing this episode to you and uh, talk about all things summer vacation, some goods, some bads, do some reflecting as well, since summer has slowly come to an end, or actually really it's come to an end fairly quickly. But yeah, so we're looking forward to bringing this episode to you. And my partner in crime, my summer vacation buddy, Jared. What's going on, Jared? Hello. I want to start by saying summer is not over. Summer vacation is over. There's still another good month of summer. Enjoy yourselves. It's beautiful outside. The dirty D is actually not that dirty. Um, (laughs) But it's powerful and it's beautiful and accept it because there's still time. However, summer vacation for a lot of people is coming is coming to an end. You know, when you were saying that, one thing I thought about, my family's from the dirty BR, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> and uh, I remember a lot of my cousins would have to go to school in August. And that always blew my mind because where I was from, uh, in Clarkston, we start school always after Labor Day. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was like, oh, that sucks. Then I learned they also ended school like mid-May. I and believe I, and it. Then, you know, the, my childish brain was like, oh, lucky. Do you, do you think they do that down south because it's so hot and unbearable after like mid-May? I'm sure it's still unbearable mid-May, oh, at least for us Michiganders. Interesting. I wonder if that's why. I can tell you, Jared. Is that all in the south? I have no idea. Okay. We're not southerners. Any of our southerner listeners out there, let us know. Yeah, please. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think, I know at least here in Michigan, our summer vacation originally was designed so kids could go help their parents on the farm oh okay that's why we had summer vacation the time we did well that would also in theory then make sense why it would be timed then because then if you're a farm worker you're like well we have to sort of match our climate and if it gets this hot in september then we have to have this sort of stuff done by this time who knows listen the more I say, the more I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we but, do here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Jared. <laughs> what I'm not an idiot to say is... Spread a little love. Please, pu- please, everyone follow us on Twitter, Untranslatable1, the number one. Follow us on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast. Uh, I went to the Dream Cruise. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I got some cool shots and uh, check them out on the gram. I'm showing Chad them right now. Ooh, nice little Mustang. Yeah. It's yeah, like a yeah. Shelby Mustang? No, I think it's just a normal Mustang. Okay. Um, a Jaguar E-Type. Oh, sweet. Uh, another Mustang. This is a Ooh, 70s is a Mustang. muscle car right there. Uh, a Shelby Cobra. Look at you cheesing. I love it. Uh, this might be an original one, which that could, that's a Ford Edsel. Nice. Uh, some old car. Okay. And so lots of some other stuff. So um, if you follow us on Instagram... Spread a little love. Untranslatable podcast. You'll see those pictures. You'll see my cheese and little face, as Chad said. And because I'm a professional, I'll put that picture first because I know how to tell how this game works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also, please spread a little love. And uh, email us untranslatable podcast. You can give us some uh, untranslatables, which are idioms, sayings, proverbs, and stuff. And they don't really make any sense if you translate them directly, but they do have a meaning. And obviously, obviously, spread a little love. Um. Five star reviews. Um, I went to the Dream Cruise. It was so much fun. You know, I'm a car nerd, and so it's just like you know, it's it's great. It's can, great. It's, can you tell the listeners exactly what the Dream Cruise is? You know, Chad, I'm glad you asked that exact question, because yes, I can. The Woodward Dream Cruise is the world's largest one day automo- automotive event, drawing 1.5 million people and 40,000 classic cars each year from around the globe. From as far away as New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and the former Soviet Union, North American uh, cruisers from California, Georgia, Canada, and all parts in between caravan to Metro Detroit to Metro Detroit to participate in what has become, for many, an annual rite of summer. 
And uh, having been away from, you know, Michigan for a bit and coming back and this being my first, you know, obviously I'm very familiar with the Dream Cruise. I'm from here. I love cars. Obviously, I've been in it. Uh, I forgot how much of like how much I love it, even though it does destroy traffic on Woodward, which is like the main (laughs) street that sort of goes through all the suburbs of Metro Detroit. Yep. And um, so it it is fun. But uh, what was I about to say? Oh, it's great. Like. It, it, you, what I really like about it is it's, it's it always seems so uniquely like Michigan to me. Like it makes me feel kind of good to be back home because it's like it's it, like it, it it is that sort of like sort of uh, Motor City on steroids kind of thing. Oh, definitely. I was driving home yesterday in my uh, in my uh, plug-in hybrid that I have, and but in front of me was a Dodge Challenger next to a uh, this Pontiac G8. And the ch- charger just did a, a burnout at a stoplight. Oh wow! And I'm like, this is great. I love this. And then they raced. And, and oh, it, that's sweet. <laughs> and it, it was like this is. And it was like one of those like race to the next light thing. I was like, oh, I love this. This is great. And then I whispered away uh, on <laughs> on electricity. But uh, it's I love it. It's great to be back, and it's great to see all that stuff. And check out pictures because it's great. Have you ever witnessed the Dream Cruise? I have not. No. That's crazy. Yeah, you never live. Been. You live. I mean, I mean, you know, I guess you don't care really. I'm not a big car guy. Yeah, it's just a lot of traffic and loud noises. If we, if there was like a Dream Cruise equivalent for guitars in Michigan, <laughs> you better believe I'm there in a is heartbeat. Is there a guitar festival or or fest in oh, here? I course. mean, I'm sure there not, is. Not in Michigan that I know of, but they have what's called the 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 NAM North American uh, Music Mass. Maybe I'm not okay. sure what the second M is, but it's. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's basically where you have all these, you know, big time, uh, big time companies displaying new gear, new equipment. What? Nope. What Sorry. Is it? What is it? That's the wrong one. That's why I'm stopping. <laughs> what is it? It's Nas- No, this is the wrong one. That's why I'm stopping. Oh. I-, I have National Association of Medical Staff Services. <laughs> oh, I see. That's I why see. I- I'm like, stop trying to make me say this. <laughs> right. I see what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. But yeah. So uh, so yeah. So and that's usually I think in tennessee every year and maybe also somewhere out in california okay um by the way i heard uh this was a while ago at this point but i heard we haven't we don't we should be talking more we live so close to each other i uh or seeing each other more i meant to say i saw that uh you went i heard excuse me not saw from you that you went to a dcfc soccer game i did how was it i've heard about these soccer games it was i heard they get rowdy they, they do. It was great. It was a friendly, though, so there okay. weren't as many. Usually, they get anywhere from four to 5,000 people in attendance. For this friendly, they had about 3,000 people. So it lo- in, in the level of the soccer, let's, it looks like the best. Well, in terms of the, where they play, it looks like the best high school setup. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's, it's a lot of fun, though. They have food trucks there. I always look forward to the food there. I usually get, get chicken shawarma, and I was super hungry, so I also got a chicken burrito then later, okay. which both were fantastic. Um, but actually, I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because before the DCFC game, I was fortunate enough to spend some time with my sister and my nephews and my sister-in-law as well. And uh, we ended up – I decided it was time, Jared. Do you know what time it was? And No, it's not time for Untranslatables just yet. <laughs> not trying to jump the gun this early. Well, what the time was? What? So, okay. Let me give you a little clue, Jerry. If you look around this room, what do you see a lot of? Oh, no. I mean, it's always the time. When is it not the time? So, <laughs> so my nephews are nine years old and 11 years old. You mean guitar talk? It was, No, it, I have given them both a guitar to use oh. while I'm gone in China. And the deal is... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah? hold on. Do you, have they been playing guitar before? No. They're just, they haven't, they just they want to? Well, so here's the thing, Jared. I've had them over lots of times. I have pictures of both my nephews being really little, just kind of strumming around on my guitars that were sitting around here. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know what? I was 10 years old when I first started playing guitar. It's time for them to get started. And if they like it, that's awesome. And I'll support them and help them. If they don't, I'll be a little hurt, a little heartbroken, <laughs> but that's also okay too. They're great athletes. Uh, they're very busy with their sports. Them, you know, they're not uh, that great anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So I have given them both an acoustic guitar, and okay. I taught them a couple little things when I visited them over the weekend. And like you, um, eh, 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 smoke on the water. Didn't Did teach, teach them, them smoke, smoke on, on the water. water. <laughs> didn't teach them smoke on the water. Taught them uh, how to play a very basic G chord. Show them how to hold a pick and strum with a pick. And uh, how to tune the guitar. 
And you should have seen how their faces lit up, though. Because okay. I had my, my youngest nephew uh, pick up. He, he came to help me bring my stuff in because I spent the night and I had two guitars with me. I said, I said can, you, can you grab this for me? And he said, oh, you brought your guitar. And then I'm like, yep. And then I, with my, on the other side of my car, I grabbed my other guitar. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, you brought two guitars. And I'm like, why do you think I have two guitars? And he's like, because you're Why gonna... are you always so cryptic with everybody? Why can't you just uh, be so s more straight up? I don't know. It's more fun that way, Jerry. You do always seem like a kind of a cryptic person all the time. Always trying to have surprises and sneak that's, up. That's, that's true. About people, but... <laughs> that's true. Um, so, yeah. So, anyways, I brought them in. And, and then... What do you think? My older nephew. You know, you can't, you can't just... I think maybe it's the teacher in me, Jared. I don't want to just oh. give the students everything. It's too easy. Life isn't like that, Jared. That's not how life works. Why are you always gonna? Uh, I'm like Alina back. Why are you always gonna be teaching people lessons, Chad? I I don't know, Jared. Well, as their uncle, I feel responsible to teach them. Oh some my lessons. gosh. But but <laughs> anyways, so you should have seen their faces light up after mm -hmm. I had uh, let them, you know, showed them the guitars and stuff. And uh, so the deal is, okay, if they can play five chords when I come back from China, so they'll have in theory they'll have a month. No, two months per one chord, right? I'll be gone 10 months. So if you, if you know your basic maths, your quick maths, you know, that's five chords. So if they can both play five chords, Brilliant. <laughs> if they can both play five chords, I am going to buy them their own. If they want an acoustic, I'll get them an acoustic. I'm hoping they'll want an electric and I'll get them an electric. Um, and so, yes. Cheaper? No, I'm kidding. So, so I'm looking forward to it. Wow. I, hope, I hope they enjoy it. Um, yeah, because it's brought so much happiness into my life, being able to play guitar, and it's been a great way to meet people and, and you know, have fun, and so yeah, so I'm, I'm excited and happy that, that they were initially also super stoked. Is so. this sort of your first uh, big, like, is this sort of your sort of big thing you've done as an uncle, you'd say? Probably. Yeah, like, it, like you maybe you've taken them places. But this feels the most significant. Like Absolutely. It, like it's like almost like you're passing them the keys to, for the Dream Cruise example, your old 67 Mustang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this thing's in pristine condition. Exactly. And I'm passing this on, this tradition on to you. This well, is not just a car. This and, is not just a guitar. And the interesting thing this is, is my love. One of, one of my nephews, um, I can already tell he's got to go to you for music. We'll be in the car. He sings along with everything on the radio. He's mm -hmm. on pitch. Um, when I was showing them just how to strum, I tried to, you know, play a little game with them, basically. Like, I would try to play a more complex rhythm. And even though he's never played guitar before, he was able to kind of mm. do it. So, so you're telling me he, uh, he's better than me is what you're saying? Maybe. Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Oh, man. Dude, That's I haven't right. practiced at all since I've been back. It's, it's all right. terrible. We got the, we got the keys know, right there. We'll have to dust them feel, off a little bit. I feel bad. I feel like I'm disrespecting myself and uh, Miss Renee. I'm sorry. Well... You know, you've still been settling in, though. It's been... Uh, yeah, but there's no excuse now. I'm, I'm, that's, I'm in. That's I'm true. That's fair. I'm All just right. a lazy... I was trying to give you an easy yeah, out, Jared. You're not going to take it. And no, I appreciate I that. that. You know? I don't need that. I appreciate it. Slipping on gator piss. That's what's happening. And well, I Jared, accept it. other than us getting a tasty boot this evening, do you have any other news that we need to share with our listeners out there? Uh, no official news. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> other than that just the usual all right well you think it's time to uh oh spread a little love well if i mean you know sorry hey spread a little love so since we are in michigan jared mm -hmm. i think it's time that we spread some love to a michigan brewery because they have the mitten brewing company has paid off one school district's entire school lunch debt Oh my gosh. So the Northport location of the brewery announced on Tuesday that it had eliminated the debt at Sutton's Bay Public Schools. The brewery said on their Facebook page they were able to pay off the debt thanks to amazing patronage in the area. And right here, Jared, it's been our best summer yet at Mitten Northport. And every day we are grateful to be part of this community, the brewery said. The company donated 2700 to the Northern Michigan School District. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, big shout out to them. That's great. Yeah. It's also a shame though, too, that a lot of these schools have debts for basic things like lunch. Um, but yeah. it is what it is, I guess. So, yeah. and that's pretty significant. I mean, yeah. it's not crazy, but that's not nothing, especially since right. it ends up falling on the kids somehow at the end of the day. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's great. And mm -hmm. you know, 
it's not, and, and that's the thing too. Like it's not much for that company, I'm sure, but it is it, it is a great token and it, and it is an easy and I don't even want to say easy. That's some, but it it is like a great way to give back actively, and not and it you know and and not really you know hurt your pockets. I you know. It's like I love the local stuff like that. I guess oh, absolutely. instead of where it's just like, oh, they donated six million to Red Cross. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So next up, we're going to give a shout out to our brothers and sisters out in England because they are planting eleven million new trees. Brilliant. And that will be uh, actually water companies in England. The water sector is committed to fighting climate change through becoming carbon neutral by twenty thirty. And one of these big plans uh, is uh, planting 11 million new trees in England by 2030 to help the industry's effort to become carbon neutral. Listen, this is wonderful. But when I hear these numbers that they throw out, it's like this is like one of those people in Africa was saying like 150 million or something. It was 56 million. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wow. You have a good memory. It's like, how do you do that? The people, Jared, you, uh, you mobilize the people and you plant them trees. Okay, I just don't even understand those. You get numbers. those cool slingshots, bro. Those cool seed slingshots. We talked about them a couple episodes back. Oh right, remember? Right, right. And you so just that by, would be by fun. By planting trees, it's it's more just blind shooting that many seeds into an area. I have no, I have no <laughs> idea. I, I knew I shouldn't say anything. I knew you were gonna ask me about that. I have I have no idea. I would imagine so, but I'm not sure. It would be cool though to get um, oh my gosh. to get somebody who's involved in like a climate change organization on the pod. That would be awesome. That'd be pretty sweet. Hey, if any of you know anybody, Spread have any up. suggestions? Please let us know. Untranslatablepodcast at gmail yeah. That would be awesome because you know we do talk a lot about climate change. Yeah. and great things a lot of different nations and cities and towns are doing to help save this planet and it would be awesome to get somebody on like that that'd be cool yeah because because i love how this stuff sounds but it's like you know numbers like that to me i was like i need some context to this right and i need i, I just yeah but but i do like that people are at least paying attention i guess you absolutely know? i mean awareness is the and first it sounds step like a lot of trees so right. i like that you right know? <laughs> you can't go wrong with some beautiful green spaces that's for sure that's true and my last shout out today goes out to the state of illinois because they are expunging uh, marijuana convictions for nearly 800,000 criminal records. You betcha. Because, look, here's the thing. Regardless of what your thoughts are on the legality of marijuana or the uses for medical purposes, I mean, the fact that many states are making it legal but n- still locking people up, usually people of color mm. and minorities, due to previous, uh, you know, crimes with, you know, drug-related crimes with marijuana, and then you have other people who are able to start businesses and get rich off of it, it's just, it's not fair. Yeah. And so it's great and, that Illinois is taking a step. And I believe Colorado has also done this. I know uh, Washington State has done this. I think California, too. Especially right. since, yeah, especially since it's now uh, recreationally legal. And, and people were locked up before it was legal for petty, right. you know, petty crimes of having exactly. tiny amounts on them. Right. And it's like these people, like, you're essentially admitting that what these people did wasn't a crime. Right. Exactly. And that's the thing. You know, I think we need to realize that. As our own laws change, we need to take a look at the judicial system and, you know, see who has been wronged by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is great. And I hope all of these people who will have their records expunged will be able to do the things they want in life and uh, will be a big help. Live long and prosper. That's right. Spread a little love. So shout out to Illinois. Yeah. Well, Jared, I think you know what time it is. I do. I do. That's the untranslatable owl. That means it's time for some new untranslatables. And every now and again, I mean to do this more often, but I never do. Every now and again, I wanna, I like to find um, ones from other English-speaking countries. Sure. Because I'll even, you know, for example, Curtin Twitcher, I think is still one of my favorites. It's a good one. Curtin Twitcher, and that's we know those what those words means, but uh, it's just yeah, it's a great untranslatable. It means like a nosy person. Mm-hmm. Always, uh, yeah. Anyway. So I got some Jamaican ones, and uh, I guess since when I read the ones in foreign languages, I kind of try to... Ooh, properly. I want to hear you do a Jamaican accent. Play with puppy dog, puppy dog lick your face. Play with dog, bi- uh, play with big dog, big dog bite ya. So is, 
I'm sorry. So, but so I thought that was not bad. That was okay. That was all right. Well, we're just getting started. I'm, That's true. I'm, I have a few. We got to get you warmed up. Uh, so play with the puppy dog. <laughs> play, play with the puppy dog, get licked in the face. Slipping play with the big dog, piece. get bit in the face. Is that what it was, more or less? Play with a small dog, and he will lick your face. Okay. Play with a big dog, and he will bite you. So it's like... Watch out who you're messing with. You mess with the wrong person, you're gonna get the strap. I, I don't know. I'm, well, <laughs> by the way, I was ready to hit the horn before he added the strap part of it. <laughs> but uh, essentially, yeah, it's more just like, um, like don't get too comfortable, you know? Okay. Where it's like, uh, it, it's essentially like, yeah, I might lick your face because I'm a, uh, I'm a puppy dog. But if you mess with me, the big dog will come out and bite ya. You know, it's just like, be careful okay. how you okay. handle yourself around me, Chad. That, I try, Jared. Because the big dog will bite I, I try my best. So, Jared, I'm going to start you off with the German one. We'll ease into the untranslatables mm. today. My German's weak, too. And this so, is... Uh, <laughs> it's all bad, everyone. And this is a, this is a good one, because it's technically all one word. But, uh... We'll explain. Excuse me. Oh, am I it's boring you, Chad? You are, <laughs> with, your, with your Jamaican <laughs> accent. So, here we go. So it is yeah. Steppenfahrer Beaugung. Depp? Steppenfahrer Beaugung. Like bist Something, du deppert? Oh, like a stupid driver. What, wait, say it again, sorry. Steppenfahrer uh, Beaugung. Like, oh, stupid driver eye, like eyes or something? Eyeballing. Eyeballing? Mm -hmm. Stupid driver eyeballing. Is that like road rage? Um, kind of. It's, I've never heard deppen before. Uh, well, th in this case, it's I think the en is because it's you're the combining plural. the words. Right. Oh, oh they're just putting you're combining it, the words. Yeah. Because that's that's easier to say depfara. Right. Depfara ba yeah. album. It's untranslatable. It should be you know g g nice on the tongue. That's right. Well, so Jared, I'm sure I'm sure you felt this way before when you've been on the expressway. Maybe even when you uh, took your long drive today to Blue Moose Studios, Azul Moose Studios, mm -hmm. and uh, you know maybe you had somebody going 55 on the left lane and uh then you drove by and you gave him the depp and um first of all can you watch your cord every time it hits the uh, thing sure i uh a little part of me dies on the inside um is this, you're not paying attention someone's not it's it's like someone, it's the look so it's, you give somebody when you drive by them when they drive like an idiot oh mm -hmm. we've all done that before yep Yep. Uh, I have a, the bad habit. Now, tell me if you do this. Almost every time I drive past someone, I have to look into their car. I do that a lot, I too. I hate yeah. it. I yep. hate that I do that. And every now and again, you look, get someone that will look back at you, and for, sometimes it feels aggressive or, at the very least, is awkward. Right. And it's like I, 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 I have to actively be like, all right, I'm not going to do it this time. Because sure. I'm like, why do I do this? That's when you got to give them that you're driving by, right? And then you got to give them the quick turn. But I do. <laughs> a quick turn in the stare. That's what you gotta do. Uh, my girlfriend and I went to Home Depot, and uh, uh, there was a dude. We were parking, and there was a dude in the car next to us, and he and we were parking, and he the whole time we were parking, he was just like this, just staring at you. And then as as she, it was on her side, so as she got out, he was just staring, and then and then like uh, and then like she looked directly at him, and he was just like, and he smiled and waved, and she would just wave back. Interesting. And I was like, how odd. Midwestern friendliness? Uh, I Midwestern don't know. creepiness? Spooky. <laughs> I guess so. I got it. I have another one. Oh, I almost did that in a Jamaican. <laughs> I got another one. Uh, <laughs> I got another one. Uh, bend a tree, uh, bend a tree while, it, while it young, because when it old, it go broke. So it's, it's like you're, you got to do stuff when you're young, because you're flexible, you're malleable. Mm, when you're see, old, No. You're obviously on the right track, but it's a little bit more specific than that. Could you say I'm on the right branch? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could say that, Chad. You're hilarious. I mean, too. it's it's it. Can you give me an example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, man. Give me that example, man. Have you ever um Have you ever been to a grocery store and uh, seen a kid just running wild? Yep. Yep. Well, you drives know what, me Chad? crazy. Bend a tree while it young. Because when it old, it go broke. Oh, so you just got to discipline them while they're young. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. I respect that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, can I give you another one? Because I have a bunch of these. Absolutely. Uh, a fish day, a fish day, <laughs> river bottom, uh, until, oh, 
I fish the river bottom and tell you say alligator, ya yeah, gumbo, you'll get believe him. There we go. You gotta sort of get in the flow of it. That's I'm not that true. good of a reader, <laughs> but you do kind of gotta sing it along. Uh, I understood like half the words you said there. If fish the river bottom and tell you say alligator, have gumbo, you'll believe him. Uh, if a fish at the bottom of the river tells you that an alligator has gumbo, you'll believe the fish. Hmm. So is that like you should believe? Uh, you, oh, I don't know who you should believe. You should believe somebody. Yeah. <laughs> like believe your elders, maybe. I don't know. Chad. Ooh, all right. It all says right. listen to the voice of experience. I'm going to say they're okay. talking about elders. All right. Well, Jared, I've decided we're putting all the languages you're learning under a microscope today. Mm. And I, <laughs> Jared's, Why do Jared's you do elated. This to me? Do I Jared's have elated, I hurt everybody. you somehow? You have. If I you have, hurt me please. because I haven't seen you enough. I feel like you, <laughs> your girlfriend's more important, Jared. Oh and so gosh. I never see you. Anyways, this one is Spanish and it is cambiar el chip. And chip as in like a computer chip, like an internal processor. Mm. Combine a chip like. Uh, sorry, cambiar means change. To change a chip? Change the chip. Oh, is it like um, to change the chip? Whereas like if someone like constantly can't understand you about something. Like, like you're trying to explain something and they can't get it. Like almost you're kind of dumb you, and you need to, you need like a new brain or something. You're, you're getting close. Okay. So so you have that Oof. person. My heart's beating fast. Right. You have that person that is maybe confusing you or they're explaining you something that's very complicated or complex. But then, then like, boop, you change the chip. Oh, you all of a sudden get it. Yep. Okay. There okay. There you go. We would say, you know, like it clicks or you have like yeah, the, yes. like a switch has flicked. Yeah, that's a good feeling. Yeah. That is a good feeling. It's a great Especially one, with like isn't math. It? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and language learning, though, too. You know what, Chad? Yeah, swap black dog for monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swap black dog for monkey. Uh, uh, yeah, swap black dog for monkey. Oh, uh, what? Uh, that's something. just a little British at the end. That for was. monkey. <laughs> something black dog for monkey? Uh, are you swapping a black dog for a monkey? Oh, hmm. So is this like, are you trading? Now, I don't know if the black dog is better or the monkey's better. Depends on the culture, right? Yeah, don't be are racist. You? Either way, it's racist. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, is it like, is it like you get a good deal? Uh, actually kind of the opposite. Oh, so you got, so, can I give you an example? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, give Chad, me an example. You look up to me. I know this. It's clear. Um, and you're often coming to me for advice and stuff, and I, uh, you, you're, you're coming to me for advice about relationships, and you're like, I just don't understand what's going on, you know? It's just, you know, wh 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 why can't I find a good lady? And I tell you, uh, you swap black dog for monkey. So I'm coming to the wrong person for advice, is what you're saying? No. <laughs> but... I like where your head's at. Okay. <laughs> because that's true most times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What is it? Uh, it means to give uh, give up on a bad situ one bad situation for another. But it's often used with relationships. I see. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. I got a Welsh one for you today, Jared. And it is glaswen, which means blue smile. Okay. Uh, it just means having a lovely smile. It does not. Do you think a blue smile would be a lovely smile, Jared? I guess not. Are you a fan of the Smurfs? Uh, I, I never really watched that. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I'm, so I'm a blue a blue smile. Uh, let me see here. I feel like favorite. I feel like a kind of blue smile that we do a lot here in the Midwest is what oh. we make. Yeah. Is it like a fake smile essentially? Yeah, a fake like or you're putting on a yeah, smile. Yeah, fake or insincere Dude, smile. That's like eighty five percent of my smiles during the <laughs> week at least. Not on the podcast though. No, no, excuse me, let me put it this way. That's like eighty five percent of my smiles in like work situations. Oh sure. Like and not even like, you know, fake laughing at someone's joke, although I do that too. But more <laughs> uh, more just like walking down the hallway and like right. <laughs> oh, how you doing? Right. People I barely know. And yeah, bl blue smile. That's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised there's not more untranslatables for that. And at least that I've heard. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure why. No expecting nothing from a pig but a grunt. Don't ex... Hmm. You're on the right path. Don't expect much for... I no mean, you're expect just ex nothing from a pig but a grunt. 
So just don't expect some. Don't expect a lot out of somebody who can't give you much. I don't know. Um. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I just don't expect anything from a pig but a grunt. Right. right. There you go. Well, Jared, those Jamaican untranslatables definitely put me in the mood to talk about summer vacation. I don't it know about did. you. Me too. You know, that's I was in the summer mood. I love summer, especially here. I've talked about this a lot, and that's because it's still true. Michigan has great summers, mm-hmm. and where I was in Philadelphia had not so great summers, temperature-wise. You could do a lot was of lovely too things humid? in the summer. Very humid. Okay. And it usually was in like the high 80s to early uh, to low 90s. Okay, yeah, it's a little to hot. Here is generally like 70s to high 80s. 70s is perfect summer weather, if nah, you ask me. Nah, I'd say low 80s is perfect summer okay. weather. Okay, fair enough. A 70s is, uh, anyway, what, as a kid, what, did, what were your uh, summer routines? Going to the lake, going to the lake and going swimming. Were you ever in like a, a camp or anything? So I went to some day camps. I went to one in Pinckney, Michigan as a kid called mm. Varsity Day Camp. Went there with a couple Varsity of my buddies. Varsity Day Camp. I know, right? Was it all dudes? No, no, no. Okay. No. That was um, sexist of me. I'm <laughs> come on, Jared. <laughs> Ladies can play varsity too. Um, Slip it on, but Yeah, it was a lot of fun. They had like a, like a little basketball court. Uh, small baseball field. Uh, you could go swimming. There was all sorts of stuff to do. It was great, and we were there. We were there from I think like nine, like nine to three or somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Other than that, um, summertime and summer vacation was usually seeing a lot of my relatives. I have relatives all over the states, and they, when my grandmother was still alive, they would all come to her house in Pinckney that was on a lake on Silver Lake in Pinckney, which is great. Um, and then after she passed, we would all meet in Red Lodge, Montana, where my uncle had a house. Mm, and so okay. I love it out West. Montana is absolutely beautiful, especially in the summertime. Although it does get very hot out there as well. And the elevation in Red Lodge is 5,555 feet. I believe if I remember correctly. Okay. That's, that's not nothing. Right. Well, do you know what it is here? Just out of no idea. Okay. Couldn't tell you. Well, during my summers, when I was young, I would go to day camps as well. Well, actually, Young Young was also like swimming lessons and stuff. Okay, nice. Um, but I would go to day camps as well when I was pretty young. And mine was at Deer Lake Athletic Club. And uh, it was like, a, you know, you do all sorts of fun sport-related activities during the day, whether it be kickball, nice. whether it be... Um, Classic. Whether it be basketball, whether it be... Uh, sometimes we would swim. Uh, no, actually, I think we might swim every day. Or um, soccer or you know flag football anything you can imagine that a child would play yep. in america we played it <laughs> you play red rover of course we played red rover chad what kind of stupid questions did, did you ever get clotheslined uh i don't know if i got clotheslined but there was one time when I, I played a lot of soccer as a kid and we i was playing um we were playing soccer during this and i ran into my friend in the face Ooh. and i split my lip pretty badly and that does for, not sound like fun for about a week before that, I had been telling my dad that my throat was itchy, mm-hmm. and he'd look in my throat and be like, you're fine, there's nothing wrong, and, he, and, I, and I kept telling him. And I went to the doctor for my split lip, and with barely even looking, he just looked in my throat. He's like, do you have an itchy throat? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I think you have strep throat. Oh, and, uh, it was, and you've been running around probably being a well, crazy I, little I'm kid. Well, I'm there right? because I ran into a kid's face right. during soccer. But also, me, I having told my dad all week that I had a, a sore throat, I looked at him almost excited <laughs> that I had strep throat. <laughs> told, like told I told you, dad, you. right? right. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, I also have strep throat now. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, no. I also, when I got older, I have family that lives in various places. I have family in Louisiana, as I mentioned. I have a, uh, uh, an uncle and a little cousin that live in... Uh, Dallas, Texas, and I have family in uh, Colorado as well, so I would go to different places uh, during the summer when I got a little bit older, but I was still pretty young. And um, there I would also do various camps, but they would be more, like, they, would, they wouldn't they would be anything, like, high level, but some of them would be, like, soccer camps, but it wouldn't be anything where it's like, oh, he might go to the pros one day. It's more like, uh, we have jobs, and we need something for this kid to do all day. Right. And also a basketball camp, which I was never good at basketball, so I was terrible at that. But another thing we did a a lot was go to like those sort of like, have you ever been to one of those arcade slash go-kart place? Oh, those are cool. Slash laser tag? Yep. Those were my jam. Those are pretty awesome. I love those. 
I'm a big fan of uh, Time Crisis, the game with the gun, oh, the orange guns. One. Yep. Uh, I love laser tag and I love go karts, so I did that a lot, especially in uh, Colorado mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Nice. Um, but I think now, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll figure this out. I think we're a little lucky as Americans with how much free time we got, how much summer vacation. Summer we got. vacation, yeah, yeah. But I think we got a good three months, right? But two I and a half, correct? To three months. But I think a lot of other countries they have their vacations a little bit more spread out. Mm. So you're right, though, and I mean honestly, in Michigan, summer vacation is great because the weather's nice. But it, and it's and yeah, I love having those months off. But it is kind of tough, also, for like um, I mean. It is it's such as life, I guess. But for like working people, people that have two parent, like parent, two parents that are both working, or one parent, mm-hmm. like summer is like sort of a headache. Sure. Yeah, trying to plan, having mm-hmm. like stuff for your kids to do, and yeah, I mean school. I mean, yeah, you you, you pay for it, I guess, if you go to public school with your right. property taxes. Um, but like, yeah, a lot of after school um, activities, extracurricular, like, yeah, places for them to like wait for mm-hmm. their parents after school are lacking. Right. When I was a kid, uh, I had a babysitter for a lot of my child, like various babysitters that might pick me up. Mm-hmm. But you know, there were times when I didn't, and my parents would be driving me to and from, and I'd always, I al- almost always be one of the uh, earlier people at school, mm-hmm. <laughs> and almost always be one of the last people getting picked up. So I'm I'm sure this will come to a big surprise, Jared, but I would have my mom drop me off earlier so I could talk to my friends and socialize. Before yeah, that, school. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. doesn't surprise you one bit, does it? <laughs> I forgot I li- to mention that. I did like to do that, but I was uh, yeah, I did like to do that. That was actually fun, like sitting in the cafeteria and stuff. Oh like definitely. That. I did enjoy that. I forgot um, to mention though, Jared, probably the coolest summer experience I had was this week long music camp called Day Jams. And uh, late shout out to sleepover camp. No, 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 no okay. day camp called day jams. Okay, I heard it was day jams. Day jams. But you just said camp. Um, and and late shout out to Mike Gentry, who is a singer songwriter, and he was my guitar teacher my final year there. I think you have to stop going. I think at like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, this is weird. Um, no, nothing weird about it. Uh, <laughs> but the cool thing was, so the way this camp worked though, Jared, is you were put in a guitar. Well, you so you picked your instrument. So you had you know guitar, bass, keyboards, vocals. I'm not sure what if I think those were basically the the quintessential parts to like a rock group, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. So definitely drums, bass, guitar, vocals, and key I think keyboards as well. And so I obviously was putting guitar. And my last year there I was paired up with Mike Gentry, who was also I think the I think he was the director of the camp. I could be wrong about that. But Mike is one of the coolest dudes out there in the entire world. And he told awesome stories during our guitar lessons, taught us a bunch of cool stuff. And I remember how... Are you still in contact? I am. Yeah. Okay. And Facebook? uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. Good old Facebook. Yep. (laughs) And uh, Everything happens on Facebook, people. That's right. Uh, But yeah. But the cool thing about this camp, though, Jared... Zuck Money, Zuckerberg. Was... um, The cool thing was, so you were... You know, you basically were placing a class, right? Guitar one, guitar two, guitar mm. three. I don't remember how high it went up. I feel up. like you're about to brag, but go ahead. Uh, well, the last year I was in the highest guitar okay. class. <laughs> there will be my little brag for you. But but the fun thing was, so then they paired you in, in bands. So okay. basically you had a week to write two songs. And then on Friday, every band would perform their two songs. And so you had, I think in the morning, you had your first guitar lesson that was an hour long. Then you had band rehearsal. And one of the counselors was like in charge of your band, and they were kind of like your manager or whatever. But they would help you write the That's songs fun, and stuff. Though. It was Do you cool. Call a manager? I no. no okay, because no. that would be fun, right? Um, but then there would probably be a lot more arguments. Right, going and in. and then we'd have lunch, and then we'd do another guitar lesson, and then I think another, like, and not only would we do, um, like, band rehearsals and write songs, but we also had like a lesson on like how to like create album covers and like what's mm. a cool album cover and how to write songs. And it was just great. It was awesome. That sounds great. And I, I'll have to contact Mike and see if he still has the video because I've don't. i looked everywhere and couldn't find it. But there was a video. It wasn't my last year there, but one year we had, you know, there were just too many guitar players in the whole camp. Mm. And so they put us all in, not all of us, but we had three guitar players in one band, no bass player. So your boy decided, okay, <laughs> I'm taking guitar lessons this week, but I'll try out bass. So, yes. so I played bass, and our group was called the Scandinavians. 
Okay. Why? Well, how did you think come up with that? I don't. I was probably twelve or thirteen. Okay. I don't, you probably I don't even remember. know where Scandinavia was. Probably not. <laughs> but so we uh, we were the Scandinavians, and we oh. all had these fake. They had like props and stuff too, so you could kind of dress up for the concert. So we all wore Viking helmets. <laughs> and I was not only yes. the bass player, but I was also the one of the singers too. How does that work? Oh, I, pff, sorry. You grab a microphone, Jared, and you play your bass and you sing. It, was it uh, at that young an age? Was it rare for, to find kids that could both play an instrument and sing well? I don't know if I would say I sing well, Jared, but no, I don't mean sing well. I mean at least sing like sing with, and play. Yeah, sing and be able to sing and play. I think you it, don't have to have a I think voice. it depends. I think it depends how long you've been playing. And I think yeah. I would have been thirteen or fourteen at that time. And uh, you already had a band outside of that. I did. Course. I had a couple. I played in a metal band actually before that. Had hair oh, down right. on my shoulders. Yeah, played in a metal band. I've seen those pictures. Um, yeah, good times. But yeah, so that was a great way to spend the summer, though. Granted, it was only a few weeks, and sadly, they don't offer the camp anymore, which is a shame because it was awesome. Okay. Um, so as I was mentioning before, and maybe we'll come think of some other summer activities that we've done because I'm sure I can think of other ones. But I was talking about how um, I think we're lucky, and I, let's 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 figure this out now. First of all. This is from Wales online, mm-hmm. so you know, Wales the country, not Wales the animal. N- no, it's no, it's from Wales the animal. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How rude! Uh, Argentina, the school year ends in early or mid December, and starts in late February or early March. With students in primary education enjoying two months off, and students in sec- secondary. Uh, school enjoying a three month break. Oh, that's like ours. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty that's close. Pretty standard. Yeah, that's pretty close. No, sorry, no, I was. It was. Uh, you're, you're good. You're it was good. a uh, burp. I'm sorry, everyone. Slipping on gator piss. Uh, Australia, summer holidays last from December to February. Oh, that's the same. Mm-hmm. Canada, the first day of the summer holiday for most schools is the last Saturday of June, uh, while the last day of okay. No, these are all so Pretty normal. similar. Yeah. Summer holidays start in early July in China. Okay. Good and to know. end in early September. So that's similar yep. to ours, too. Yep. They have a little bit less time. I'll start teaching to, uh, September 1st in China. Oh, Denmark. The holiday normally... Holiday. Oh, the holidays normally last from the end of June to the early or mid-August. Okay. Coming to six weeks. That's nothing for, you, you, for us. You know why they say holidays and not vacation, right? Because it's a UK... Oh, right. Nice place. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Chad, there you go. Chad. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> um, Germany. Do you know what Germany is? Uh, uh, well, I know for university, they start really late, like October. I'm not sure about high school, though. I would guess... I would guess this those... I would guess no, July. Below college. Yeah, yeah. I would guess July... August. They start... I would say they start, start their summer vacation in July and then... Start school in September. Well, here's the deal. It's from the it's the window is usually June and June to September. However, okay. it varies, and the holidays. How long? All right, let's put it this way. How long do you think the holiday lasts for? Because it varies between six weeks. There you go, six and a half weeks. Was I? Ooh, all right. That was mm. a lucky guess, but I'll take it. I'll take it. India summer holiday in India tends to vary in duration as different parts of the country face different clim- climactic conditions. At the same time, in northern India, school ends in mid-May and begins in the first week of July. Oh, that's nothing. Oh, that's a quick one. Uh, except in the Kashmir Valley, where the summer holiday lasts ten days. Oh, though, that's terrible. Though they get a winter break from the middle of December until February. Okay. So well, that's all right. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. That's all right. That's not too bad. That well, sounds like that's Albion. Not too bad. That's. Albion, our college would have uh, winter breaks that I also almost felt was too long. They were. Because we were the last people to go back to school. And so you'd yep. be sitting here like, all right, well, Twiddle all my thumbs. friends that I was hanging out with are now back at their own college. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> and Spe- I'm just ready to go back. Speaking of, you know, missing your friends going back because you're still on vacation, they went back to school, Jared. Let's talk about some of the, some of our favorite and least favorite things about summer vacation. Um, you know, my parents make, used to make me do... Uh, uh, make make you used to make me do like assignments during like math and writing assignments during summer. Your parents would, I could see that. <laughs> I hated that. <laughs> okay. Um, what did I hate most about summer? Well, let's start with the good, the best things about summer. The good thing about living in Michigan in summer, you're always you're never excuse me, you're never far away from a lake. Yep. 
Uh, so there's a lot of time spent in water in mm-hmm. the summer around mm-hmm. here. Um, the freedom, especially, you know, we're talking school times, really. I mean, this because, is America. We are home of the free, Jerry. I mean, you're a teacher, so you still get summer breaks, but I'm a mm-hmm. working Amer- American, so uh, no <laughs> summer breaks for uh, for me over here. I'm, I'm working for the weekend, baby. It's all right. I've been relaxing twice as hard with That's you in true. mind. But. And I was also unemployed for essentially three months, and... I guess I wasn't really relaxing though, because I like I also needed a job. Right, so. that's a little stressful, yeah. <laughs> but it was kind of nice after I got the job. I was like, oh, this is actually kind of nice. Anyway, um, what are some of your highlights? I oh, yeah, uh, uh, super soaker fights. Oh, yep. Slip and slides. Slip and slides. Uh, super soaker fights. Water balloon fights. Water balloons. Cla- all classics of summer for sure. Yes. Also, I mean here in here in Dexter, we have. The attraction of all attractions, aka the small little Dairy Queen in the middle of our town. <laughs> so that was always a fun Ice thing to do in the summer. Are popping, dude. Oh yeah, in uh, in summer around here. There's one where I used to live. Um, I don't remember the one where I used to live when I was. I mean, there definitely was one when I used to when you know I was growing up because mm-hmm. I left there when I was like eleven. So, um, but there was. Oh wait, no, and uh, Clarkston Creamery actually might be what it's called. But there is also one where I grew up where, when I came back. Where like in the summer, at a certain time. On like a Friday or Saturday, the line will be longer than like a club or something to get some <laughs> to get some right. ice cream. But it's fun, especially. Oh, I don't absolutely. know. I, I love that. And, you, and then you kind of just sit out there, like essentially in the parking lot, and enjoy mm-hmm. your ice cream. But it's but especially along Woodward, which is where the Dream Cruise is happening right now. And I bet you the line at that place is down the block ridiculous because yep. it is right out on Woodward, mm-hmm. and um, it, it almost kind of is reminiscent of like uh, 50s and 60s cruising culture. Oh, almost. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And for me, too, like here in Dexter, another big thing is like a and It's like a little drive-in hot dog place. Love that place. It's popping as well during the yeah. summer. Jared's clearly not a fan. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, it's, I don't think the the root beer is that great. I haven't had the food in forever. Ooh, so wa- watch yourself, Jared. I can't really speak. I, I'll drink it. I mean, it's soda. It's just not my favorite it's, soda. It's what? I'm sorry, it's what? Dude, I, you know, I was actually, I went to breakfast this morning, and my girlfriend is not from Michigan, and the guy behind us was ordering takeout. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'd also like to get some pops. Okay, <laughs> and I was like, did you, and uh, but anyway, yeah, I say soda. Um, we say pop here in Michigan. Everybody who doesn't know, we that. do. Yeah, I do. Except for they Jared. do. But I'm from here. I'm one of you guys. Please. Right. Uh, what else do you like about summer? Well, another big one too is like any town or city that has a river going through it, floating down the river. Mm. That's a big one. Yeah, floating down the river. I didn't do a lot of that, but I have done that before. Let me I, let I me understand the joy of it's a simple but enjoyable thing. Right. It's just a comfortable place to do nothing. Now let me give you a list of ten. And I want to get your thoughts on them. Okay. So, number 10, longer days. Especially here in Michigan. I hate to keep doing this, but, um, yeah, it doesn't get dark here until, like, 9 o'clock. It's great. Yeah. I love sitting on the deck or on the porch until 9 or 10 o'clock at mm-hmm. night. Yeah. Watching the sun go down. It's so great. Yeah, and, and I think you also kind of um, naturally wake up earlier. Because as if, especially if you have or live in a room that has nice windows, mm-hmm. you'll naturally wake up earlier just because the sun's coming up earlier. I I love that. Right. Oh, it's great. I haven't set my alarm. I've set my alarm maybe five right, times this okay. summer. It's great. Just move on. All it's right. beautiful. I've set my alarm, beautiful. but I have a job. That's right. <laughs> um, another big one though, Jared, with summer. I don't know. I'm curious what your take is on this. The hot weather depends on where you're at. Because I told you when I was in Philadelphia. I loved I loved the winters because Philadelphia is a, a poppin' city, so there's mm-hmm. a lot going on. But especially me, I'm a sweater. We we always talk about yep. this. You and on I and both. off the mic, we always talk about our sweating issues. <laughs> You're and, welcome, everybody. Um, really, the sweating is less related to and I you know I until I lived in a dry area for a bit in Colorado I, I had an internship there a while ago you never really understood that sort of dry heat thing. Right. And so it's like, definitely a thing though. Yes. And so having lived in a very dry place and having lived in a very uh, moist place, <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it just, like, you just, it, it just contributes to a, a bad time. Yeah. And, and it sort of ruins any sort of time outside. And, you're, and at least me personally, when I'm in those situations, even if it's not a big issue, I'm just more hyper aware of the fact that I'm sweaty. Right. And so I, it, that is a bummer to me. And so, but here in Michigan... It's not really. It is humid, mm-hmm. generally speaking, but it's right. not bad at all. I will say this though too. It's not a problem for me. At the least. good thing about I'm gonna sound like a bro here, but I'm gonna say it regardless. Good thing about that heat though is suns out, guns out. Get your tank tops out of your drawers, yeah, people. I'm with you. You know, right. I, I don't wear tank tops enough 
around the town. But it's just because you have to be aware of where you're going. Like, right. I'm not going to wear a tank top to a restaurant. Especially since another thing that we have talked about before is the fact that Americans love AC. Oh, so yes. most times if you're going to be outside, I mean, unless you're just enjoying the outside, right. which is another thing I love mm-hmm. about summer, obviously, mm-hmm. you're going to be going somewhere. So yeah, you might be able to enjoy the sun's out, guns out life, but as soon as you go anywhere, I mean, freezing. even in here, it's pretty brisk in here. Yep. Yep. That AC's pumping. Yep. My parents do like their AC, that's for sure. I mean, hey, it's better than a, a parents that like it hot. That's true. Another good one, though, about Summer Jared that I really love is just all of the festivals, fun stuff, and live music to see. And I yes. think that's m- not only here in Michigan and in the States, but I think that's everywhere, at least in Europe. They have so many festivals during the summer. Labor Day weekend. Labor Day is, I believe, September 2nd, which is a Monday. So the weekend mm-hmm. before that is Labor Day weekend. There's a lot of music festivals going on. The one that I remember specifically, because I've been, I used to go to it, Arts Beats and Eats. A lot of fun. It used to be in Pontiac, I believe, but they recently moved it to Royal Oak. We, we, I think we talked about that we did. for some reason. We did. And I mentioned, but it actually recently moved to Royal Oak because I was like, that doesn't sound right to me. Uh, used to be in Pontiac, which is a city right. actually further down Woodward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, and so that is that's a lot of fun because they get a lot of uh, great bands mm-hmm. um, and just outdoor activities. And not only outdoor activities like local, I mean locally, but even like big concerts. Absolutely. You know, you can enjoy an amphitheater like, for example, Red Rocks in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So much more in this time. Or DTE, also known as Pine Knob here yeah, in Michigan. Yeah, for the real OGs. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Another big one for summer, Jen. I'm curious to get your take on this. Chilling in a hammock. Are you a hammock guy? I was actually just thinking that I need to get a hammock. I, 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 That'd look good in your backyard, get a little hammock right there. Yeah, I think I can make it happen. I like the idea of a hammock, and I think I would like it because um, I do enjoy sitting out on my front porch. I am often sitting out on my front porch in the summer. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I recently moved into a place, and when moving into a place, you always realize what you need, so it's a constant um, oh, definitely. buying of stuff that kind of mm-hmm. gets uh, old real quickly. So uh, my house is actually essentially done on the inside, but I am I haven't yet bought like proper uh, like I, I have like a little front you know patio area, and I haven't yet bought proper front deck stuff. So I just drag out like uh, chairs from inside and sit right. outside. But I still sit outside for at least like an hour or two. Mm. Or, oh, or it's, two. it's great. Yeah, it's I really love great. it. And so. Um, Th- that in itself is something that I love about summer. And that is also what I'm trying to also think about is, you know, just because we're adults doesn't mean we can't not enjoy summer because we have jobs and stuff. Because, oh, like, right. I also enjoy, I think, as I get older, especially as an American person, but you can do this in other places, too, is, like, road trips. Like, short, Absolutely. shorter road trips. And Take a road trip road to the trips. lake yeah. or go camping for the weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. Did I tell you I'm going, quote, unquote, up north for a Labor Day weekend? That's very Michigan of you, Jared. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Up very north nice. could be it's so generic, but right. everyone says it. Nice. Jared, are you a, are you a f- flip-flop kind of guy? Trying to rock those thongs, no, my man? No, the only time I wear flip-flops is uh, they, they're they right by my door, and I do it for quick jaunts outside. Okay, same uh, here. Or when I'm washing my car. I'm not, I don't understand how people find those comfortable Me for either. Like, Me walking either. around. I do like the slides. The slides. The slides. Oh, when yeah, you slide yeah, yeah, your feet yeah, yeah. in, they have Those the are little, more comfortable. Yeah, I'm not a big flip-flop guy. Another cool thing about summer, though, too, Jared, is all the garage sales and yard sales. Yeah, I actually just walked past one today. I believe it. Yeah. You know, they, they say that one man's trash is another man's treasure, <laughs> and during summertime, you might be able to find a lot of treasures or a lot of trash, depending on who you are. Are garage sales uniquely American? I don't know. That's a great question. Okay. I have no idea. That's a great Great question. Because it se- to me, it seems like a u- unique. Like a, a un- I don't really remember garage sales when I lived in Germany. Yeah, I don't think they. Yeah, I don't think they do that. For over some there. reason, I feel like they'd find that uncouth or something. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And we with just that. like rummaging through uh, our neighbor's trash. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man, that would be that would be so classy. Um, another one too is like summer style drinks. Like, I, what what's your go to summer drink, Jared? I'll drink a lighter beer in the summer. Okay. I like a uh, margarita. Oh, you can't go I love Mexican margarita. food. I mean, Mexican food is oh, uh, so one good. of the top foods out there. Let's be honest. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I love a margarita. Um, that's the big one. I'd say a good lighter beer, like a good... Uh, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, like Oberon, for example. Mm-hmm. A Two Hearted is great for the summer, too. Yeah. Which is... These are all Michigan. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, a Two Hearted is like a light, like a summery IPA. Right. 
Um, hazy, hazy, hazy IPA, IPA. Is good. What we're sipping on right um, now, yep. Uh, a mojito, maybe, yeah. if you like mint. You know what my go-to summer drink is? We're not talking beer. I'm going to guess. Can I guess? Yeah. Gin and tonic. There, woo, there we go, yeah. buddy. A little gin and tonic all day long. Hey. Brilliant. <laughs> They're so good. And, you know, I have to blame I have to blame my dad for this one because... I like gin and tonics, too. Oh, and so and good. you can't mess up a gin and tonic. Not, not, no, not really. There's really no unless ratio you don't like, of gin Unless and tonic. you don't like gin, but then why are you drinking gin and tonic? But there's really no ratio of gin and tonic that makes it taste drastically different. That's a good point, actually. Like, you might have you, to test this theory uh, later. Unless that's you just point. get ridiculous with it. Like, right, right. <laughs> a splash of tonic water in, <laughs> with your gin. Yeah. There's really no ratio that makes it taste any different, right. really, to me. And the funny thing is I have to I have to kind of put the blame on my on my dad because I'd come I'd come home and you know maybe he got done with some yard work and he would always have this clear drink with a couple ice cubes and a lime in it. I'm mm. like what what are you drinking? Gin- he would always say gin and tonic. He should have been a salesman for like Seagram's or something because he was like gin and tonic. It's so refreshing. Your dad could have been like the most interesting man for right? Seagram's. Right? Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> he like fit. He like has on like a tank top and he finishes mowing his lawn. And he That's like right. takes a has swig. His gin and tonic. I don't always drink gin, but when I do, <laughs> I it's mean, I guess I have to change right. it up. Right. Dos Equis might sue for that. That's true. Um, so yeah, I also so yeah, margarita is probably my top go to. Okay. Though. That's a that's a solid one. That yeah. is a solid one. What about? Uh, you know, we've mentioned Rib Fest. What about the open kind of open market, like food type of festivals in the summer? I, I, I Let me give you my two cents, I guess, before you give me yours. My thought is if it's too hot, though, I can't eat that much food. It's miserable. I can eat food. It, it depends. It, mine, uh, heat, how hot it is doesn't really have any. Okay. Because I was, when I went to the Rib Fest or whatever it was called, mine wasn't Rib Fest. Mine was like, uh, mine was pig and whiskey. So it was like just barbecue, essentially. Right. Um, and uh, I like, it was super hot. It was the heat wave weekend. We both went to the, on the same weekend. And we're also, as I mentioned, surrounded by grills. However, I, I went around like two or three in the afternoon and that was the first I'd eaten all day. So I was starving. Right. Um, and so that had nothing to do with my ability to eat. Uh, so that's a good one. What I like, which I don't go to enough, but I like in theory. Let me be clear. I'm not trying to be, pretend like I'm someone that I'm not. Mm-hmm. Farmers markets. Oh, they're great. Uh, I like. I like. I like a like. I, I feel like I eat more salads in some mm-hmm. in summer. Okay. And I like a uh, like a good tomato. A, a actual, good tomato. Because you know you go to grocery store like a generic grocery store and you cut open a tomato and they're not that juicy. Right. Uh, so I like a good gro- get for, those farmers fresh market. ones. Yeah. I like. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think of other food related ones I've gone to. Um, I like eating outside. Taco trucks. I do like food trucks, but I don't go to those that often. I like eating okay. outside though. Okay. Are you one to off- Are you one to take advantage of eating outside if they offer it? Absolutely. Why not? I think eating outside is a. Uh, I, I I I feel sorry for the people that don't eat outside. I'm gonna be honest with you, because I think it's great. And I think that it is, um, you're, I think it's, uh, and the bug situation is rarely a problem that I've experienced. Yeah, I mean, it's not really too bad. And maybe, I don't know if we're lucky where we are, maybe if we're in the south and the bayou in Florida or Louisiana yeah, that might be or different. something. It might be bad. It's like, yeah, you're at constant risk of West Nile. I don't know. Is that a, is that, am I, uh, am I, uh. Slip it on. <laughs> you, might, you, might, you might just be. <laughs> But like, uh, I love eating outside, and I uh, and that's something I'm definitely gonna miss. You know, Jared, you mentioned bugs, and so now I want to get into some of the negative parts of summer vacation. Because yeah, look, that's a big one. It ain't all flowers, man. You know, um, so bugs I think can be a bad one. I hate mosquitoes with a burning passion. Mm-hmm. I will say this though: there were not a lot of mosquitoes in, in, in Philly, Philadelphia. I don't think there usually are a ton in big cities. Okay, is that I why? I don't think because it was the it was I never was annoyed by mosquitoes. Obviously, it's much more of a problem here for mm-hmm. me than it was when I lived in Philly. Right, right, and and so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it's when really I they when I see spiders around my house, I usually don't kill them because I know they're going to be getting those skeeters and those other bugs. Okay, that's people so, always say that. Yep. So how effective are they at, at actually doing that? They're pretty good hunters, I think. Okay, I, I'll I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You're not concerned about eating a spider in the middle of the night? Extra protein, my man. <laughs> Extra protein. I don't know what to tell you. I'm actually not really concerned about that either. Right. Like, if I don't know about it, who cares? So that's one negative part. Obviously, is the bug. Another one too that I cannot stand is you get in your car. This is more for our American listeners out there. You get into your car mm. come summertime, and it is just hot. If you got black leather seats. 
I have cloth seats, but um, when when I lived so uh, when I lived in Colorado, that I had an internship there when I was in college. I was in the south in Pueblo, and it was essentially the desert. Right. And uh, that was before I had tinted windows. And I mm-hmm. kind of did it more out of necessity because I have a manual car, and I almost couldn't even drive it. Like, I felt like I needed an uh, oven mitt for my right. hand. And so, um, I, and so it was just unbearable. And, you know, unless you have some sort of a Rolls Royce or something or Mercedes Benz, right. you got to wait for that AC to kick in. And it's just, oh, God. Right. Yeah. I, but I, I'd say that's a first world problem. Yeah. Oh, I, for sure. I, I'd say that's a problem, but that's not something that makes me hate summer. Right. That's like, fair. That's fair. I mean, I don't think any of these make me hate summer. Well, They're that's just true. Some negatives. Hate is very aggressive. So, so this one, Jared, <laughs> not not to not to be that guy, but this one is more for our fair skinned friends out there, getting sunburned. <laughs> okay. That's another thing that I, you know, it's really a negative you thing know, about actually, summer. Actually, look look that way. I noticed you kind of have a line right here. Do I? Yeah. You can't really see it as the okay. sun's gone down a little bit. Okay. But uh, you do look like you spent some time in the sun. Oh, I have. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I do get burned, but I don't get burned. I get darker. Okay. Like, I'm definitely... Not, and I don't know if you can see it now, but I wear glasses usually. It hurts with my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually wear glasses. And, like, usually if I am if I spend a lot of time, especially, like, during college, I spend a lot of time outside, especially with all those frat-related games. Listen to a couple episodes back, and you'll know what we're talking about. I would usually have, like, the outline of my glasses, Your glasses on my okay. face. But it's not like it's not like I'm peeling or like I'm right. like itchy because I'm burning. Right. Or oh, that's the worst, Jared. But the other thing is, so say say you are smart and you put on your sunscreen. Well, if you I do wear put it on your face English. though, sunblock in your eyes is the worst feeling. Yeah. And just that that the way your skin feels and like I don't like the smell of sunscreen. And you know, Chad, I don't know about you, but I'm a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> We've never talked about this before. <laughs> never on the podcast, but yeah. No, I know that. Yeah. No, it's it's terrible. I actually, you know, and you're you know, I, I, you're actually kind of right. I um only put on sunscreen really if I'm in like aggressive sort of sun situations where I know I'm going to be out. Like for example, my sister and I uh went kayaking a couple weeks ago. Then I'm going to put on sunscreen. Oh, for There's sure. There's no shade. I'm exposed to the sun for like two and a half hours. Right. That's uh, that's just common sense for any sort of low level skin care. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And the last thing I want to mention too is something that you you mentioned earlier in this segment that during summertime, you know, you go outside and you're wearing your your shorts and your flip flops or your tank top, and then you come inside. At least for our listeners in the states, mm-hmm. and then you're you're blasted by the AC. And I can I never know like do I wear jeans to this. Do I wear shorts? Mm. What the heck should I wear? Because I know, speaking of sweat, I know there's going to be some back sweat if it's really hot out. And yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just no good. But Often at home, I find myself with maybe shorts on, but a hoodie or something during right. summer. And it feels foolish. Right. And European listeners are probably like They're cracking up. You know they are. <laughs> for sure. They're cracking up. Because most of them don't have AC at all. Right. And poor you, you poor people. <laughs> right. Yeah, AC, it's it's a double-edged sword. It's great because it keeps you cool. But then, like like I said, when you go outside and then you come back in, it's like, whoo. Did you have a lot of babysitters when you were younger? I didn't. Okay. Your nope. parents just left you at home? They did. Left me like a feral <laughs> child that okay. I am. What can I say? Um, but, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of great things about summer, though, Jared. But, mm-hmm. you know, what really makes summer fantastic, though, a lot of times is the music, of Dude, course. you betcha. Now, tell me you don't have, and now I'm putting both of us on the spot, and I probably can't think of anything. Mm-hmm. Like, there is music that's just like, this is summer music. Right. And it's like you got like a summer playlist. I'm sure a lot of people have summer playlists. Or if anything, I remember songs that, you know, might not be summer might mm-hmm. not be summer music, but from specific summers. Like I remember the fir- the summer that I really started getting into NERD mm-hmm. was when I was first moved back from Germany and I was getting my license. So I remember I went to, you know, my parents were at work during the day mm-hmm. and I went to like the local public school to, you know, take all the classes and stuff. Right. And it was like a 20 minute walk. So I'd either bike or walk. And like that NERD album, uh, I would that just be playing jam, all huh? the time all right. when I would be doing it. And I just when, I just think of that summer whenever I listen to that, right. those albums. Let me see here. Summer tunes. I mean, there's, well, the, the clearest and most obvious one is Doing Time. By Sublime, but okay. that's one that goes summertime. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Mm-hmm. So that was a big one. 
Um, actually, thanks to Spotify, we could look at my summer rewind. We won't do that, but we could. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of stuff on there. This is not about your summer um, re- rewind. It is not. Not this episode. <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of great music um, that reminds me of summer. Dude, travel playlist would be a great episode. Oh, good call. Good call. <clears throat> All right. Good call. Down. Nice. But we're here to talk about the song of the pod today, Jared. Yeah. Which is called Rain by the Teskey Brothers, which mm-hmm. is kind of like a blues r and B. I don't know. I don't want to put them in. I just put them in a category, but I don't want to. They're great. This song is called Rain, as I mentioned. It's off of their album Run Home Slow. How'd you hear about this? You know, I have this great co-host with this podcast I do called the Untranslatable Podcast. Oh, okay. For a second, I was going to say, do you do a different podcast? And uh, gotcha. I do. It's called the Millennial State of Mind. <laughs> it's with Don Strite. It drops every Monday. No, that's Jared's <laughs> other this. podcast, everybody. Um, <laughs> but no, so this is called uh, uh, Rain by the Teskey Brothers. And Jared had mentioned, I am a lover of all things covers. Mm-hmm. And Jared is not because Jared appreciates originality. And it's great. I See, respect it. Uh, I respect it. Not that, I guess it's not that I don't like covers. It's just I would never really listen to them right i'm a, i was actually listening to richie havens another one but of my previous song of the pods you also really grew up uh musically as a blues nerd oh for sure and covering is way more of a staple Definitely. in the blues community absolutely so, absolutely you know, it's a big maybe thing. it's just also how you kind of grew because i grew up listening to like hip-hop and r&b right. and stuff that's more like collabs and features I, right I, yeah I think there's not to say you know, the only sort of covers they're doing is taking those people that you listen to right. as uh, beats. They're samples, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And rabbing right. over them. Right. <laughs> anyway, tell us about Teskey. Uh, well, the Teskey well, first brothers. of all, you tell us about how you found out about it, because you're the one who told me. Well, I'll tell you, I like Colors. Colors is a YouTube Colors is channel great. where they, uh, but that's not really how I found out about it. I don't keep up with Colors actively. Like, every now and again, I like to go there. Like, honestly, before I listen to, before we record, is when I do a lot of my music listening. Like an mm-hmm. hour before is usually when I sit down and I'll put on music or whatever and get our stuff together. And um, I like to listen to Colors when I do that. But I, this I heard from um, – I heard about mostly from Twitter. People okay. were tweeting. So I saw the thumbnail because I subscribed to Colors, but I didn't right. listen to it. Okay. But then on Twitter I saw everyone talking about it. And I was like, all right, I got to listen to this now. And, and black people, because I uh, enjoy black Twitter, were making jokes about um, – See now I gotta find them, but I don't even know how to find them. But they're I because I, I didn't think about the song until like just now, so I didn't save these, even though I should have. Uh, but he, they were saying songs like, "Why does this guy sound like he's been oppressed by uh, by like <laughs> centuries of like slave owners or like like they're just saying like he sounds very soulful, right? But they're making does. they're making jokes about slavery and how he sounds like an abused black person. Oh jeez, like <laughs> they're funnier than that people, All right? right. <laughs> just to right. be clear. But uh, yeah, no, he does sound very soulful, mm-hmm. and he does have a great voice. He has like I love uh, just in general, uh, from male or female, that raspy quality to a yeah, voice. Absolutely, um, I I really enjoy that quality. And it's very and, soulful. And the horns in the background, mm-hmm. everything. I I get a really Otis Redding vibe. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I like that. I like. And that. I love me some Otis Redding, but yeah, the Teskey Brothers is actually a group from Melbourne, Australia, mm-hmm. and they're fantastic. Yeah, it's soulful. It's got some great horn arrangements. Yeah. It's awesome. Listen to this tune, though, with your speakers on 11, because it is yes. fantastic. I agree. I agree. So check that out if you want some soulfulness into your summer vacation. This is this is good for sitting on the you know porch. Maybe it's like here in Michigan, it's mm-hmm. 8.30, 9 o'clock, the sun's right. going Have down. Have a cigar or something. Yeah. A nice gin tonic or mojito or yeah. margarita. margarita. Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. I love this song. It is fantastic. And I hope, I feel like, I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I feel like you're going to listen to more of this. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to check out their entire discography. I love when I do that. Also, this was published on August 1st, 2019, at least on their YouTube channel. So it seems fairly re- recent. So that's pretty okay. cool. Yeah, well, he was just on uh, Colors a couple weeks ago. Right. So check that out. The Teskey Brothers, Rain. It'll be on our Twitter, Untranslatable One. Betcha. And our YouTube channel, Untranslatable Podcast. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been getting lazy with the Twitter recently. Uh-oh. But Uh-oh. it is is always in the YouTube playlist. I, right. I do there we do go. that. I need to stop saying that. All right, Jared. Well, now it is time <laughs> for our foreign words of the pod. And I am attempting to learn Chinese. I found out Chinese is on Duolingo. So I've been doing okay. that, which has been fun. But my Chinese word for you today, Jared, is Yang Guang. Season. Any? any nope. Yang Guang. Summer. Nope. It's something that you you will see very often in summer. Flowers. Nope. 
I'm going to just keep having you guess. Trees. Until... Nope. Uh, beach. Uh, well, so when you're on the beach, ideally you want this there. Oh, well, I can see it now. It is sunshine. <laughs> Yang Guang. Sunshine. Which okay. is sunshine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a Spanish word of the pot, of course. And it is uh, verano. Interesting. There's actually a... Uh, I don't Bran know if this will help verano? you. Be verano. Verano, but I think oh, they say... Uh, don't they yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. Be verano. Verano. And interesting because... Me as a car person, I don't know if this will help you, but this is my clue to you because I don't think you know what this is. I don't. I didn't know that this was also a kind of Buick. The the Buick Verano. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. Is a car. Does it? But does it mean summer? There you go. Very good. Okay. Very good. All right. The Buick Summer is what it's called, I'll everyone. It. Well, Jared, I appreciate the Spanish work of the pod. Now it's time for some cheesy and corny summer jokes. Okay. So, Jared, what day is the best day to go to the beach? Uh, I don't know. What is it? Sunday. Oh, okay. Gotta get that that sunshine in, my man. That Yang Guang. What uh, did the bacon say when he was chilling at the beach? Man, it's sizzling out here. Oh, I screwed up the joke. It's what did the pig say when he was chilling at the beach? Uh, I'm bacon. Oh, I'm bacon. I screwed man, up the punchline. <laughs> screwed up the. Uh, oh man, that was bad. That was a good joke, though. Man, you were in a right? good one too. Right, I did. I did. I, <laughs> I know, like right? That one. Right. <laughs> um, so, what holds the sun up in the sky, Jared? Um, what is it? Sunbeams. Oh, uh, there we go. I get it. Right. That's sort of a pun play on words. That's right. And my last one for you, Jared is what does the sun drink out of? Uh, what's that? Sunglasses. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of the things you put on your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sunglasses. They're glasses for the sun. I literally like, looked at my glasses. I was like, how does that even work? <laughs> right, right. So there you go. Well, I think the biggest thing, though, about summer vacation, Jared, to wrap up our episode today is just the fact that you can get outside, mm. enjoy the beautiful weather. And something we didn't mention, but I think is important to mention at the end of the pod, is also spending time with your loved ones, whether yeah. that be your friends or your family. And it's not just a thing for children to enjoy. Not at all. Not at all. Like, you, like just go outside more. You know? Exactly. Enjoy that yang guang it in. or that sunshine. Mm -hmm. And we hope all of you have been having a lovely summer and have you been betcha. enjoying it to the fullest. And we thank you all for all of your support and participation here with the Untranslatable Podcast. Yes. Let us know what you thought about this episode at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. You can slide into our DMs for some cool car pictures from the Dream Cruise. From the Woodward Dream Cruise. And also some other, perhaps we can find oh, some good summer Oh, and some DC pictures. pictures that I have been put up by the time you're listening to this. That's right. As I mentioned, your boy's lazy, okay? It's summertime. It's time to relax, Jared. I don't blame you one bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Let us know what you thought of it. Untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Slide into those DMs on Twitter, Untranslatable1. You Let us know some of your favorite things about summer and what you enjoy to do. And, of course, lastly, don't forget five-star reviews on iTunes or Stitcher. Let us know how we can make this podcast better for you. We would really appreciate it. So, with that being said... As we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, de cuyame, muchas gracias, and shisha. Sure, sure.